this video is brought to you by Canva. What's up my friends, Mike again, glad to have you guys back. So I've been making YouTube videos for like the past three years now and we just recently hit 100,000 subscribers. So recently I've been getting a ton of questions about the studio and how it works, how I make my YouTube videos. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the full behind the scenes studio tour and share with you guys the gear I use, how I use it, and all the tips and tricks that I've learned in the past three years to make YouTube videos like this. So with what you see right here, this is the entire studio. There's actually a table in front. I got my notes and iPad so I can read off of it sometimes. But usually when you're making YouTube videos, it's split up into three parts for myself. You got the A roll, which is the talking head shots where I'm talking to the audience straight ahead. And then when you're doing tech, you have product B rolls, which you just shoot the product by itself. And then we have the editing and making the thumbnail, which is like post-processing and we'll be going through each and every step. So anyways, we got the A roll over here. I usually like to hide all this on the side so I just zoom into my camera like that and it makes everything a lot more organized or neater. On the other side is what this recording thing looks like right over here. So as you can see on top of me I actually have this rig thing over here which I'll talk about in the b-roll section. As you can see this wall I don't need it to be that nice. It's actually just a blank white wall so that I can shoot the light off and bounce it off onto my face so that I'm all pretty and uh, cinematic or whatever you call it over here. You got the light over here and I got some natural light coming in over here and that's really nice but I think the first question about this whole thing is what am I shooting all of this on right now so for the past eight months I've been making all my YouTube videos on the Sony a7c I think this just might be the best camera for people who do a lot of Instagram and YouTube because both the photo and video quality is superb. It's a full frame camera that's squished into a compact form factor so it's lightweight. And when I take this out to film videos, people aren't gonna freak out or be too intimidated when they see a camera like this. And most importantly, if you're someone like me just filming yourself, it's very important to have good autofocus and the Sony camera is like really good at focusing because I can put something in the middle like this, pull it back out and it's focused right on my face. I don't need someone else on the back checking if it's in focus or not. The other really important thing is that it has a flippy screen right here. So I'm actually this far away from the screen and I can see it perfectly. Although it's a small screen, I don't need a, another monitor on top of my camera. That just kind of makes things more difficult because you got to set it up, plug in the HDMI and stuff. And also notice I have the tripod pushed up against the wall so that the camera is almost flush against it so that I can have the most distance here and a lot of distance in the back as well so that you get that blurry effect. And by the way, I am using the Tamron 17 to 28. It's a ultra wide lens and I got this around a year and a half, two years ago and it's one of the best investments I've made. It's a zoom lens which makes it very very, very useful for making videos so you don't have to move the tripod every single time. Another cool thing is that on Sony cameras, you can use the Super 35 mode to crop in, which optically magnifies everything, making the lens longer, more like a 40 millimeter lens. In this mode, I can still film in 4K, so it's awesome. Also, another thing that's a small thing, but it's a very important thing, is actually using the 128 SD cards. I used to use a 64 before, and switching to 128 was life-changing for recording because you don't have to stop what you're doing, offload it, format it, and then continue your work. I can just film any project using only one card. And moving along, the only thing that's attached to my camera is the Rode Wireless Go. This mic is super useful because if you've been a longtime follower of my channel, you'll know that this is actually a very small and compact room and it has a lot of echo and reverb. So it makes using these mics kind of useless. Because if I switch it to this mic over here, you're gonna see the difference right away. So now we're using the Sony mic can you hear the difference? There's a lot of reverb testing. One, two, three. And now switching back to the Rode Video Micro. And now back on the wireless testing. One, two, three. How does that sound? So I can be over here, like way across the room, and the audio is still gonna sound the same. Or I can be even talking to the wall backwards, and it's still good. So I think this setup works great if you work in a small studio and have this reverb problem. It'll probably save you a lot of money from buying those studio foam and having the trouble of sticking them all over your ceilings and stuff. So as a video creator on YouTube and as a one-man team, one of the most important accessories I use and use all the time is a tripod. This is very useful because this is how I get all the stable shots of me talking to myself like this or stable shots of me doing something else to demonstrate something to the audience. 
So a year ago, I finally bit the bullet and bought Peak Design's Traveler tripod. It's made of carbon fiber, so it's super light, but it's also super expensive. However, after using it for this long, I think it's definitely worth it because I bring it with me everywhere and I use it almost every day. So with the Peak Design tripod, it actually is a ball mount over here. It's very easy to mount. It's a quick release, so I can just pop my camera in there and lock it in and it's very secure. It also uses this mechanism to tighten or unlock the ball head. So it's very, very easy to adjust. I can make it vertical, lock it in, and I can be making vertical videos right now on TikTok if I ever wanted to. Or I can just, you know, be a normal person and make it landscape, you know? And while we're on the topic of tripods, I think it's very important to have smaller tripods as well in the studio. Cause you know those times when you have your tripod all set up, but you want a really low angle shot to get a better perspective? That's where these tripods come in. So being able to change between all three tripods really quickly was a game changer in my workflow when I'm filming B-roll. Also, if I'm really lazy that day and don't want to set up a tripod for whatever reason, I can always just place this tripod here and use my adjustable desk to adjust the height of this angle so that it's like I have a full tripod. So that's another neat studio trick for you to kind of save space. Remember to like and subscribe. So before I was using the newer studio lights that I bought on Amazon, they have a lot of LEDs in it and I use the batteries on the back so that it's a portable setup. I can just take it from one place to another. However, as time passed by, I just just noticed that these lights weren't as powerful. So right now I'm using the Amaran 100D. So with this light over here, it actually lights up my whole studio. Because if you haven't noticed that this room has no lights at all, besides the natural light that I'm getting from the window. So the light is very powerful and it only uses one color, which is daylight, which is all that I need. Like before I thought I needed something that my newer studio light had, which is like adjustable tungsten look, which gets kind of orangey. But for a small studio use like this, having a constant daylight is perfect. But anyways, with the current setup right now, the Amaran 100D is only using 17% of light. And the important thing here is that with lights like that, you can either have like a really big soft box, but I don't have space for that. And I don't want it shooting directly at my face because it will be like overexposed and it's not gonna look Great, so the fix that I had for it, if you didn't catch it the first time, was that I'm shooting it at the white wall. And this is great because it saves me a lot of space and it's free and it's a functional use of the space. So now we're gonna move into the second setup where I have the a flat lay stuff and unboxings. This way you can capture my reaction to what I'm unboxing and you can see what I'm unboxing at the same time. So as you can see, my hands are over here and it's like all synced together. This is very useful when I'm doing something live and I only wanna film it once. So to create that kind of effect, I'm actually using this rig over here. It's like an overhead rig. It's a boom arm by Newer. It's not supposed to be used like this, but I think it's for lights originally, but I put a camera at the very end instead of a light. So this is my RX100 over here it's a very light camera so it works really well for the boom arm I usually have my a7c over here as well and this is a situation where having a lighter camera is advantageous because this thing won't all tumble down and you don't have to worry about it falling so with this rig I have a few things over here I have a light over here it's controlled like this it's a halo light so that it can illuminate everything below and everything is mounted on friction arms so that I can adjust it to whichever angle that I want and Secondly, I have a mic over here. It's connected to the zoom recorder. This is very useful because with unboxings, you want that ASMR crispness with the sound and it records everything on the table. And then over here, I have some battery packs. These are by OmniCharge, super useful. I usually use it to power up the halo light and it's charging my RX100 right now so I don't have to worry about battery. The nice thing is that if I want to take it out to use when I'm out and about, I can just take it out like that. So these batteries are very versatile and very rugged. I dropped these multiple times. They're still okay. And as you can see, if you mount something heavy on here, it's gonna wobble quite a bit. So I did add this arm over here to add as support so the whole thing won't fall. And I also use my controller over here to press record so that I don't have to touch the camera. So I don't have to wait for that wobble to stop. So again, the remote is very useful. Or to make it more stable when I'm using my A7C on there or a heavier camera, I actually use my backpack over here as a counterweight. So it really helps with that wobbling and you can add stuff in your backpack pack whenever you want to make the counterweight effective. So that's my little hack right there with this whole thing. 
And by the way, to see what I'm doing down here, I'm actually using a monitor. It's the Shinobi by Atmos. This is really useful because I can't usually see the screen even with the flippy screen, it's hard to see. So this is quite nice. And what I love about this is that I can change the aspect ratios so that I can see the full thing. Or when I'm doing Instagram stuff, I can change it to one over one over here and I can get the exact frame that I want for flat light pictures or when I'm doing just simple unboxings on Instagram. So this is a very useful tool for that. Also, this monitor is very high resolution. It's very useful to see if something's in focus, especially when you do unboxings, you only do it once and you wanna make sure you get the shot. So the other thing that's worth noting about this setup is this table. It does two very important things. So having an adjustable standing desk for your B-rolls and uh, your flat lay is very, very useful because you don't have to move your camera much. and. Uh, everything is a lot closer now as you can see so it's actually better for your posture when you're working a long time doing flat lays or whatever but the most important thing here is that you can actually move the desk I put wheels underneath so I think I found this triple wheel thing at Home Depot or Rona. It's actually used for moving heavy things, which works perfectly for my desk and my work situation. I need the room to transform very quickly and move the desks to different places to open up the space for different uses, like when I'm shooting product shots on my desk. As a tech content creator, it's very important to get those smooth motions for all my product shots because it makes it more cinematic or interesting so that I can keep the viewer's attention and show them something that they need to see in a different perspective. To get shots like this, I'm using the Manfrotto 055 tripod. It's super sturdy, it's built like a tank, and the best part about this tripod is its fluid drag system that's built into the video head. This is how I get those buttery smooth steady shots in both the pan and tilt axis. When I apply force to it, the video head moves at a constant speed so there won't be any jitters in my shots making everything I shoot buttery smooth. Using this tool makes it so easy you don't need to be a pro anyone can do this and get the same results. And next if you want to get more fancy we can use a slider. Right now I'm using the Zeppin Micro 2. It uses a very similar mechanism to the fluid drag system. So just put your camera on it and start pushing to get the shots that you want. I like using a slider to get another perspective. It just feels a lot more epic when when you're zooming out of an item. I use this type of shot a lot in my desk setup videos to slowly reveal more to the audience. So an important thing to note here is that the camera moves with the slide rails at the same time, giving it a longer distance than the rail themselves. So this tiny slider is longer than it looks. And next, this is like the ultimate form of fancy. Here are some RGB lights. I'm using the ones from Aperture to give the product a brand new look by using contrasting colors. And as for the final touch, this is a product spinning thingy. It will spin anything that you put on it. And once that gets going, this is the point where we apply all the techniques and style of shots that I talked about before. This is how I usually like to shoot my product shots in my product reviews because they simply look cool, it matches my style, and I'm proud of the final result that I see in my videos. But keep in mind, you don't need to do any of this to be successful. This is just how I like to do things. B-rolls are all about supporting your story and helping you make a point. You can do that however you want, as long as it works. Making the B-rolls is one of the funnest parts to make it more creative and all that. But there's one important thing here to note is that when I'm filming my B-roll at the end of it, I always take the thumbnail picture as well. That is the most important part of this process or else I would have to set up and do everything over again. So if you're a YouTube content creator, your thumbnail and your title are extremely important. It's gonna be the first thing that the viewer sees and it's the only thing that's gonna make them click into your video. So no matter how good your video is, it doesn't matter unless they click into it. So for myself, getting the thumbnail done first just puts my mind at rest or else I can't even get onto editing. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do all of that using my favorite graphic design platform, Canva, which is also the sponsor of this video. I've actually been using Canva since I started making YouTube videos on my channel, so if you've been a long time subscriber, you might remember these thumbnails. And I gotta admit that making a good thumbnail is a bit tough, it's not the easiest thing to learn. So using Canva allows you to design content for your project with thousands of easy to use customizable templates created by professionals. These are designs that actually look great and they're very easy to edit and personalize to make it your own for your own content. The platform is super intuitive to use, you can work on your phone or your desktop. And if you wanna make video content, they have a ton of animated templates as well. Now this is very cool because they even have video templates for YouTube intros and outros to instantly upgrade your videos. So you can choose from a ton of stock videos that Canva has in their library, or you can upload your own media to use as well. 
Now, you can use Canva completely for free right now. There's tons of awesome templates on the free plan. However, you truly unlock its potential when you sign up for the pro account. With the pro subscription, it really gives you an unlimited number of ways for you to connect with your audience. We're talking about millions of digital assets and almost double the amount of customizable templates. And because I always have hookups for my friends, Canva is giving you Canva Pro for free for 45 days if you sign up using the link in the description box below. You can also sign up and use Canva completely for free. So definitely try it out using the link below. I think using Canva is the easiest way to upgrade the quality of your content. And I personally love using it for YouTube and Instagram. So big thanks to Canva for sponsoring this video and hooking us all up. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the editing. This is kind of trippy because we're gonna edit the video that you're watching right now. So editing can be a whole video in itself, but I'm gonna give you the basics. And if you want me to make a whole video on this, uh, I could just let me know in the comments below. So right now I'm using Final Cut Pro to edit my videos. So this might look a bit complicated. There's a ton of things going on. However, the thing I'm highlighting right now is the A-roll. That's the footage I was talking about before where you're just talking to the camera face to face and you're telling a story. So for example, I have all this talking parts down here, but what you guys would see is me showing the camera because I'm talking about the camera. So if we hide this part, you will just see me talking and talking and talking. And there's this one part I wanted to hide, which is over here. In this part, I'm just reading off my iPad, so it's not the best thing. So that's why I have the B-roll on top over here to hide it all. And this is a very useful trick because um, I can't remember all the things on the script and I can speak a lot better when I'm reading off something than um, trying to make something up like I am right now. So the main point is that your B-roll is supposed to support your story or whatever you're narrating or saying to just explain things better or to make a point. Because in video, when you show someone something, it's a lot easier than you trying to describe it. So I do that throughout the whole video and another example over here is when I'm talking about how I'm using the monitor for Instagram and stuff, I actually show different pictures that I posted on my Instagram using this overhead rig and the unboxing that I did with it as well. So instead of me just keep pointing at the camera over here like this, which is quite boring. So again, it's a lot easier showing the audience with video rather than trying to describe what I'm talking about. And next, this part is pretty interesting because it's all voiceovers. The part where I'm describing how to shoot B-rolls because sometimes it's just a lot easier shooting what I'm doing first and then explaining it afterwards because with voiceovers, there's no footage at all. I don't need to talk in front of the camera. And I do all my voiceovers on this Shure mic over here. I got this around two months ago and have been using it ever since. It is super crisp and easy to use. It's literally plug and play. It has its own software that works for Mac and PC. And in the software, you can choose near or far and it will automatically figure out the best settings to get the best sound. So if I'm talking into the mic right now, you're gonna hear quite a big difference versus the Rode wireless mic that I'm using. So if you were able to detect and hear that difference in this section of the video, that's all coming from this mic. So another important note with YouTube videos is that you wanna make your point in the first 30 seconds because people will click off if you drag on too long and it, just in general, you wanna make your videos very useful, very to the point. And with editing, it is really an art that I have yet to master. Although I think I'm better at editing than filming. Cause with editing, it really helps with the storytelling, with making a point. And I think it's all about the structure that you tell your story as well. You want the flow to make sense and keep your audience engaged, making them feel that every second that they spend on your video, you're moving forward and not just wasting their time talking about random stuff. And I think that each scene change or b-roll or cut should make a point and keep your audience engaged. It's very, very important to have a high retention rate on your videos and that's how you do it. So guys, if you're still watching, I applaud you. This was a long, long video. I like really tried to pour my heart and brains out to tell you everything that I know right now. It's not easy being a content creator. There's a ton of stuff to learn but it's a craft, it's something to master, and truly it's all about being a good storyteller. So friends, if you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments below. I love to hear about what you learned, or if this video inspired you to make something, or if it was just a total waste of your time. I hope that's not the case, but if you found this video very useful, make sure to share with a friend, like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already yet with the notification bell turned on to get the latest updates about my channel from YouTube. And that's it for now, friends. Thank Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye! And last
last note here, I know some of you guys were judging my footwear and uh, let's talk about it. So I wear the Burks in the studios. It's very comfortable. This is very, very important if you're working with hard floor because you walk around all day. So wearing these while walking around and filming has been great. I highly recommend it. And if you're wondering why red, um, I just like the color red. <laughs>